Hi, I'm Vicky from Balloon Market and I'm going to show you five cool things that you can do with a 260Q. The first thing we're going to make is a 260Q balloon chain. So for this, you need four 260s. I've gone for gold. Just need to stretch them all out. And then we're going to inflate them with six pumps for each one. By inflating with six pumps, it gives that little extra bit at the end there um, for the air to move through the 260 when you're um, manipulating them. So what we're going to do now is just tie two together. So you've got two sets of two. We're then going to have them long ways and we're going to place one across the other so it's a bit like a cross. So we're going to pull the long ways one down towards you and we're going to pinch and twist. And I twist normally like two or three times just to make sure it's secure. So it should look like that. So once you've done your first pinch and twist, you want to position the 260 up so that you've got an opening for the, the next 260 to be tied through. So if you pull both of them down, pinch and twist. And then they come out to the sides. And then you take your upright 260 and carry on, pinch and twist. And that returns upright. And you carry on following that process all the way down. And then I'm gonna stop there because there is quite a lot of tension in the bottom of these 260s. Um, so before it gets any tighter, I'm just gonna hold the end and snip that. And we're gonna tie them. So I'm just going to do a knot at the end of that one and snip off the extra bits. And then we'll do the same for the other 260 as well. We snip that extra bit off. And there you have your 260Q chain. You can carry on extending these. There's a little space there to then start again and add another 260. So you can have them as long as you wish. Um, but they're really effective. Great for like balloon walls to add texture, um, different themes, pirates, that kind of stuff. Okay, so we are going to make a woven leaf. So this is um, a really cool design, great for um, safari, jungle, dinosaur themes. It looks really good as well, not that hard to make. So yeah, give it a go. So you need five 260s to start with. I'm gonna stretch them all out. And then we're going to inflate them with five pumps of helium. Um, not helium at all, but air, using a hand pump, not a helium cylinder. And I'm going to create a duplet. I'm going to tie those off. I've got one here I've already prepared. And then this last one, we're just going to have it as a single 260. I'm going to tie that off and then I'm just going to give them all a bit of a squeeze just to um, loosen them up. Just so um, when, you, when you make your twists, there's not as much tension in the balloon. So you've got enough space there. That's the same reason why we don't inflate the full 260 as well. So there's a little gap here. So when you're twisting your balloon and the air is moving down the balloon, there is, there's room for the air to move into. 
Yeah. So we're going to get our single 260, lay it flat on the table, and we're going to place the duplets horizontal across it. I'm then going to pull down the top section to lock the other 260s in place. We're going to pinch and twist. And I'm just going to tuck the neck through just to secure it as well. Okay. I'm going to take the 260 down towards you, cross it over and twist. I like to twist it a few times to secure it in place. So once we've got it set out like this, we've twisted the two 60s together. I'm then going to take the right hand end and twist that with the single 260 that's vertical. So that will create another little bubble on the back of the design. So you've got it in place and it looks like that. We're now going to do the same with the top 260. So again, bring it down. I'm going to go left over right and twist. And then we're going to twist it with the single 260 as well. I'm going to continue doing this process all the way down. And then I'm going to end it there because my vertical 260 that was on its own has come to an end. So once you're at the bottom, you want to snip your ends of your 260s. I do two at a time so that you can tie them together. Secure that and then tie the end, cut the ends of these ones. Tie those in place. And then this last little one, I'm just going to snip that as well and just tie it to one of the other ones. Snip off the extra bits. And there you have your finished woven leaf. Okay, so now we are going to make a 260Q snowflake or star it could be used for as well. Um, great for like frozen themes, winter wonderlands, um, Christmas designs, that kind of stuff. So once you've got your 260, we want to stretch it out. We're gonna use three pumps of air on this one. Tie it off and then we're just going to squeeze it to make it a little bit softer. So we're going to use the same process as making um, a string of pearls. So you want to create four pearls to start with. You don't want them too big so just a small kind of bubble is a good shape. It looks better if they're smaller and you want to try and get them all the same size. So if you make sure you twist the same way so that they don't all come undone. And while you're doing this first part, you need to make sure that you keep hold of this first one, otherwise it will all unravel. So once you've got your first four, you want to take the last three that you've done so and put them into a triangle shape like this and twist them. I normally twist them about three times just to make sure that they're tight there and they don't come undone. So you can now let go of that one, that'll sit tight. So once we've got that, we're gonna do the same process again and we're gonna create another four pearls. So now we've got our four, we're going to make the last three into a triangle and twist those. And we're going to do that again. So you can see it taking shape there. So that's four sides. I'm going to go with another one. That's 
flatten it all down and just see where we're at. So that was the last side there. What I'm going to do now is take the end of the first one that we did. It's got the end of the balloon and that's going to be weaved into this section here just to secure it. So you can just tie it round. And then with the end of the 260, I'm just going to snip that to let the air out. Make sure you hold the end so you don't let go and your snowflake deflates. So once you've got the end of that, you can also just weave that in and out and tie it to the end of the other balloon. I'm going to trim both the ends off. And then you just want to put it flat on a surface to position your sides. And there's your little snowflake. And you can secure those onto designs using like U-glue dashes, you can put them on number columns, even like big, bigger designs, balloon walls, you could stick those on just to add more intricate detail. So we are now going to make a six petal flower. So these are um, really effective looking. Um, they just, you can add the extra wow to your designs using these. All you need is literally one 260 and a five inch balloon. So I'm sure you've got those lying around. Um, you can use lots of different color co combos. You can put them in like smaller designs like table decorations, but also they, could, they look great in um, big hoops, balloon walls that sort of thing to add extra texture. So we are going to inflate our 260 with three pumps of air. I'm going to tie that off. And then the technique we are going to use is a pinch twist, which is used in lots of different um, designs. So this is a great one for practicing because you're going to need to do this six times to create the petals. So I'm going to bend that over, pinch and twist. With these flowers, they tend to look better and more neat if you can do a tight little pinch twist. And each petal, you need to try and get it to be the same size so it looks consistent. Okay, so I've made six pinch twists there. I'm going to now position them so that they are in a shape of a flower. Once you've got your flower shape like that, you just want to snip off the back section and just try and keep hold of it up here so it doesn't all unravel. And then you can weave that section of the balloon in and out just to seal it and trim that off. And then to make the center of our, our flower, I'm just going to use a five inch balloon add a tiny bit of air into it. You want to push the pan pump right into the top of the five inch balloon to stretch out the tiny bit of the top because we only literally want the smallest little circle. Let the air out, keep hold of that. You can actually twist it. And then you can just push that through one of your petals, weave it through. And that should stay in place like that. So once you've got all your petals at similar sizes, they just, they look really sort of snug and tight together um, rather than having one large one, one small one. So yeah, really important to try and keep the consistency in your petals. Um, and these look really good if you've got like three bunched together on like a number, you could stick them on using U glue dashes, um, that kind of thing. So yeah, that is how to make a six petal flower. So for our next 260 trick, we're going to show you how to jazz up a number balloon. Um, so we, we've used three 260s for this one. It just adds more value um, and just, yeah, makes it look cool. So you've got your three 260s. 
I've got a blue number five down here that I'm going to use. So I've gone for pale blue um, and a darker blue as well, which I'm going to use for the string of pearls. So what I'm going to do first is inflate the two straight 260s. Leave a little section at the end there so that we can tie that together. I'm going to wrap this round and then tie the two ends. You want it quite snug to the balloon so it's not moving around. And then you can just double knot that. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Wrap that around and tie it nice and snug. So now I'm going to get my darker 260, stretch it out and we're going to inflate it with three pumps of air. Tie it up. And then we're going to start twisting our pearl of beads. So I normally try and make these around two fingers width. You can make them slightly bigger, two or three, but I just find um, they're more pleasing to the eye if they're around that size. When you're twisting, you want to make sure that you're twisting the same way. If you twist one direction and then change to the other direction, the whole thing will unravel, so you don't want that to happen. I normally twist around three times per pearl just to make sure that it stays put. While you're twisting as well, you want to make sure that you keep hold of this first bead here. If you let go, the whole thing will unravel. Yeah, so that was just to show you what happened. So we'll start that again. So make sure you keep hold of that first pearl really tightly. Okay, now I'm going to lay it in between my 260s. If you've got these snug enough, it's quite good because it will support the beads and kind of hold them in place while you're trying to make sure that they are in the right place. So we'll turn that over. With the end of the 260 where the knot is, I'm going to, going to tie that round the end of the last pearl that we just twisted secure that in place. Okay, so I've just done a little knot there and then I'm going to snip the end of this bit that we don't need anymore. Let the air escape. And then just to secure that side as well, I'm going to tie that to the other end. So this one has just unraveled there. It does sometimes happen when you're um, tying them together because you're pulling. So you can just twist that again and it should stay in place. If you find that it does unravel again, a good little tip is to use like a glue dot or a um, U-glue dash and you can just stick that to your balloon and that should stay in place. So I'm just going to trim off the little extra bits to make it look a bit tidier. And we'll just push those together to make it all neat. And that is how we jazz up a number five. Hopefully you found those five techniques useful. If you wanted to learn a little bit more about balloon twisting, there's lots of videos on our channel. So make sure you like and subscribe and thank you for watching.